there is a huge difference between the reality of, you know, uh, intelligence tradecraft and Hollywood and novels. Yes, we, we, we train hard on, on, on shooting and driving and counterterrorism driving, crash and bang, pitting, all that stuff we do. But in our world, when you're doing that, your mission's already blown. Because a black operation is exactly that. The best operation is the one that only you know that happens. The person that, that you did the deed to don't know that you bugged their, their computers or that you broke into their house and put video cameras in their meeting rooms or that you recruited somebody high in their government that is providing us with the real truth of what you're doing and not doing. You know, the fact that for me to go see Tom uh, at the other side of the street because he lives in, you know, he, he works at the Ministry of Interior or whatever, I literally have to go in an opposite direction with a purpose, make stops, buy things, all to see if I am being followed. And it has to make sense um, because surveillance is watching you. You know, if you're an American working out of a U.S. embassy overseas, you're considered a spy until they get bored of, of looking at you. That is across the board. And that's hard for the average American to comprehend. The fact that you could walk out of that door and have somebody being following you without any, you know, illegalities in, in their culture. So uh, learning tradecraft is our bread and butter. Tradecraft is how you behave while you are outside of your home or inside of your home. You don't discuss things of importance inside of your home. You're always aware of your environments. You have to learn how to detect surveillance so you can know when you're under surveillance and when you're not, so you could go to meetings without compromising your assets. Ma maintaining cover um, when we're operational, and anytime we're living overseas, we're operational. Cover starts by living your cover. In other words, if you're there under Department of Defense or Business or State Department, you have to have verifiable jobs doing exactly what you're saying that you're doing. Um, you know, so if you're the political officer, um, but you're really a spy, guess what? You're a political officer from nine to five. Maintaining your cover starts with living your cover. I mentioned tradecraft is, is the way that we lull the surveillance uh, of, 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 of opposing governments into, oh, he's, he's just a boring guy. Here he goes again, he's gonna play pool at this place or whatever, uh, and, and you kind of let them focus on somebody else's acting squirrely. Blending in is the hardest part. I think that uh, the fact that I don't look like a typical American or I can make myself look like a lot of other things with grow hair, take hair off, you know, change clothing. But that comes after you have actually switched from the cover that you're living to the operational act that you're deploying to do. So let's say that I walk out of the embassy at five o'clock and I go home and I change clothes, but I have a bag in the car with clothing for, for going to a meeting. So now I go out and I start my routine of going different places to make sure that I'm not being followed, go have a meeting with, with a clandestine individual or a, a recruitment meeting or whatever. And the same thing in reverse, coming back, you have to make sure you're not being surveilled on the way back because if your agent or developmental is bad, you're gonna get compromised or you're gonna bring it home or you're gonna bring it to your colleagues. So maintaining cover uh, is, is, is an art form. There's a lot of things that buttress cover. And one is area knowledge. The other is, is uh, knowing the culture and definitely managing the language. If you could pass for anything other than an American, you will be able to make that transition from being under State Department cover to what we call cover for action. Cover for action means you now are have an excuse for doing what you're doing that is not related to your embassy work. And those are all things that you have to come up with. Why Why am I here? Why am I meeting with this individual? You have to have uh, cohesive stories and reasons to do so. The amount of information that we have visibility into is of course a burden, uh, as, as much as it's enlightening is also a burden because you have to uh, be aware that if you ever get captured and interrogated, there's a good chance that you're gonna spill the beans. But I, th I think that uh, the, the, the good outweighs the bad. Uh, once I leave a country, anybody I dealt with, I flush those names down the toilet. I don't, I don't recall them on purpose. So I guess that gives me a, a safety valve there that I feel confident that at least I, I cannot go into great detail if I'm captured and tortured, but I uh, hope I never find out. There's things that have changed and things that remain the same. The, uh, like I said, the art and science of, of recruiting and running agents 
is basic. I mean, that, that is just a procedural kind of thing that you have. It's, it's, a, it's very complicated, very complex, but that remains the same because it's the human aspect of the, the intelligence collection of, uh, phenomena, which is one of the main legs, but it's only one leg of the collection efforts. Um, I think technology has, uh, has done an incredible uh, job in, it's a quantum leap for us when it comes to secure communications, covert communications. So I was in uh, my third tour when beepers came out. And for us, that was the biggest technological quantum leap we could have thought of because now instead of picking up the phone and calling somebody at their home and going, uh, the birds fly north for the winter, you know, some stupid sign that lets them know that he's got to go to a meeting. Now you just literally like texting, you send them a phone number. And the way that it was broken down is, let's say the first three says that I need to see you immediately. The next three is where we're going to meet. You, you work this out with your agents beh beforehand. This is what this means. So now I send you a text. You could be in front of your boss, look at your text and put it away. You know, what's that? Ah, it's my wife trying to call me again. So for it, something as simple as the beepers for us meant we did not have to do a cold call or have to go walk the streets at night making marks on, on phone booths and, and uh, mailboxes or stop signs or whatever. So the agent goes by and says, ooh, there's a red X on that. That means that Rick needs to see me tomorrow at three o'clock at such and such a place as we prearranged. And then you take it to the, to, to the current, you know, the, the current situation between GPS technology you know, surveillance before was a real art form. For you to be surveil somebody and not be detected, it's a major thing. It's not like in the movies. I always see this, you know, the, the good guy comes out and he's a train officer. He gets in that, in that car, he drives, a car pulls right behind him. He never notices that. For the next 20 minutes, every turn, and then finally he may look back. But, but now with GPS is you could GPS somebody's car and you could be three blocks behind following him. But you got to realize that all these tools are two-edged swords for us. They facilitate things for us to do, but it also facilitates our enemy's capability of catching us doing something. If I'm doing a surveillance detection route and I'm making sure that nobody's following me, but there's this little eight inch drone flying behind my car at 300 feet that I'm never gonna see, guess what? I'm being watched and I don't know it. One of the biggest contrasts between a, an action movie and reality is we have 140 stars on our wall of honor. Those are men and women who have sacrificed their lives for this country. You gotta understand 140 bases does not sound a lot, a lot, like a lot, but the agency is a very small agency and the operational components of that agency is even minuscule. To think that we have had that many people sacrifice their lives during operations is actually something you will never see in the movies. Almost a third of those 140 stars are post 9-11. That means those are people that I knew some that I, I sent in harm's way, and that's why I felt compelled to write Black Ops, to try to bridge that gap between agency and, and that, that uh, science fiction that they make out of espionage out there.